Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are on the planet Saturn, searching for agents from Darjeeda. Investigating an apparently deserted scrap battle yard, Happy glances up at a crane control tower. Well, the tower looks empty, Commander. And the men we're after must be in the buildings at the other end of the yard. Come on. Oh, what's that? The crane. Someone started the electromagnetic crane. Hey, Commander, look. It's swinging right over our heads. The magnet with the scrap metal hanging from it. Somebody is in that tower, Happy. If they cut the current, that metal will fall and crush us. We'll return in just a moment with a thrilling story, The Conquest of Darjeeda. Space Patrollers, this is Commander Corey. Let me ask you something. When Mom and Dad had the breakfast coffee this morning, did you have a good hot drink? You know, you need a real morning warm-up for all-day power. That's why you should always start the day the Space Patrol way with a big cup of Nestle's Instant Cocoa. It's just loaded with good hot nourishment for real energy. And Nestle's makes the greatest hot cocoa you've ever tasted. It's rich, it's smooth, it's delicious. It's really out of this universe. Now, wait till you see what fast fun it is to fix. And Nestle's ever ready is so easy, it just about makes itself. Now listen, here's all you do. Just put one, two, three teaspoons of Nestle's in your cup and add hot water. That's all. Now you're all ready to drink it and get your supply of morning pep. Nestle's ever ready is the complete cocoa, too. You add nothing but water because whole milk and sugar are already in it. You ought to see the lineup around here when they sound the Nestle's call. Everybody goes for that delicious Nestle's chocolate flavor. That goes for me, too. Why don't you get the Space Patrol habit? Ask Mom to stock your galley with Nestle's and drink it regularly, the way we do, and you'll have power to spare. That's Nestle's ever ready cocoa in the bright red can. And now, our Space Patrol adventure, The Conquest of Darjeeda. Shardu, who claims to be the rightful emperor of the remote planet Darjeeda, has sent spies to the solar system to recover a jeweled crown. Commander Corey realizes that the crown, in the possession of a tyrant like Shardu, could cause trouble and bloodshed on Darjeeda and in the United Planets as well. So far, Buzz has been able to outwit Shardu and his agents. In the city of Telgo on Darjeeda, Shardu blames his assistant, Borvane, for the failure of his recent attempt to destroy Buzz and Happy. We had them both right here on Darjeeda, and you let them get away. But Shardu, the opportunity was priceless, and you bundled it. We could have forced Corey to tell us where he has hidden the crown, and we could have obtained weapons from the United Planets. Weapons that would ensure our victory over the League of the Green Serpent. It's not all my fault, Shardu. You'll just let me explain. I am not interested in excuses. I have another plan that will ensure my victory over my enemies. And it will not involve us in any more battles with this Commander Cory. But Shardu, only Cory knows where the crown is hidden. Listen, Bobby. This is my plan. In a few hours, agents of the League of the Green Serpent will land here on this planet. They will triumphantly announce that they have the town of Daijuku. Oh, you say They will inform their leader that they obtained it from my agents in the United Planet. But that will put the League in power. They'll destroy us immediately. Wait. The town is not genuine. I have had my genesis construct a reasonably accurate copy of the real town. And my agents on the planet Mars have allowed the League agents to take it away from them. I don't see how we can benefit from this trick. Picture what will happen. The League agents will arrive here on Dijeda in triumph. The planet will go mad with joy. So, when the celebration is at its height, we will step in. We will proclaim the crown a fake. What is more, we will prove it. We will produce ancient documents and pictures. I we conclude that the very jewels in the crown are imitation. Even so, I don't see Think it. of the reaction that will set in. The people will turn against the lead of the Green Serpent. They will be outraged against the League for using fraud and deceit. I see. 
and the operation power, you will be empty. Exactly. I will let myself be persuaded to rule thy people. Just one more thing, Shardy. Even if the League and its leaders are in disgrace, won't they still continue their fight against us? I have also solved that problem. We need no weapons. I have worked out a method for one of my agents to steal United Planet's spaceship loaded with weapons and bring it to Daijiba. But if the ship is missing, Corey will suspect us. Not this time. The ship will disappear as though it met with an accident. Corey will never know the truth. Right now, Buzz and Happy have blasted off from Terra and are on their way to the planet Saturn where agents of the League of the Green Serpent are believed to be operating. At this moment, the Terra 5 is approaching the orbit of Jupiter. Well, Commander, in about three hours, we'll have put two or three more Darjita agents out of business. If each one we capture can lead us to several others. Someday we'll get a couple of key men from each faction and have the whole up the Chardus and the League. Well, it's sure strange, Commander. The cause of all this is a jeweled crown. A crown that's supposed to bring wisdom to the ruler who wears it. Yes, and peace, prosperity, and justice to the people of Darjita. They sure won't get that kind of government from Shardu or the League. The, the people of Darjeeling are advanced. In some ways, they're smarter than we are. How can they fall for this goopy superstition about a crown? Oh, don't be too quick to call it superstition. Remember, centuries ago, we learned that the one country called superstition may be a scientific fact in another. Yeah, but putting on a crown or a different kind of hat, well, that isn't going to make a man suddenly wise or good. Too often, it's had the opposite effect in our solar system, at least. But we know nothing about the crown, very little about Darjeeling. The sensible thing to do is withhold judgment. Code 97, urgent call station. Code 97. Commander, it's a distress call. Which is the emergency frequency, huh? Manicori aboard Terra 5 responding to Code 97. Come in. Pilot Taxi, door to Commander Corey. I'm in a spacesuit. Keep all in Sector 7 of Jupiter orbit. Get a fix in the signal now. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Vaughn. What happened? I was aboard the Star Drive cargo ship J-18 with my co-pilot, Taft Decker. We're about to go into Star Drive for Pluto. Something went wrong with our air supply. Yes, go on. Decker's got me into a spaceman. I'm hazy about the rest. I remember an explosion. That was in free fall out in space in the suit. What about Decker's? I don't know. I haven't been able to contact him. He lost his life taking care of me. I'll notify Jupiter Space Patrol units to search Sector 7 for Decker's. We'll pick you up, Thorne. Thanks, Commander. I'm being pulled toward Jupiter. I can't tell what my velocity is, but it's probably increasing at a terrific rate. I've got a fix on him, sir. He's about 50 degrees away on a 48-degree heading. Keep your suit transmitter operating, Thorne. We've located you. We'll have you safely aboard in a few minutes. And on the planet Darjita, Shardu is in a jubilant mood. He's even forgotten his recent outburst of anger at his assistant, Borvain. My plan is working already, Borvain. We now have weapons at our disposal. Powerful weapons from the United Planet. So soon? Are they here on Telga? We couldn't land the United Planet ship here in the city without exciting suspicion. But the weapons will be brought here to my headquarters in the surface tracks. And the United Planets won't miss the ship? No. After Jekers sabotaged the air supply, he put the pilot in spacesuit and pushed him out into space. Then he tossed out a space torpedo. The pilot obviously will report that the ship exploded. And the ship and Jekers will be listed as destroyed in space. <laughs> Wonderful. Listen. Listen. The people of the city celebrating... And the League agents must have arrived at the fake town. Yes. And the crowds are carrying them through the streets in triumph. I don't like it, Sheldon. Once the League leaders are accepted, it might not be so easy to get them out. Nonsense. Let the crowd cheer. When we expose the crown as a fake, those cheers will turn to angry roars. They all want revenge against the League. I hope you're right. Of course I'm right. The people will demand that I rule, Dajita. If the League tries to stop me, I will declare them traitors and destroy them with our new weapons. In Saturn City, not far from the spaceport, is a junkyard enclosed by a high fence. Cautiously, Buzz and Happy enter through a small door at the rear of the yard and make their way around the heaps of scrap metal. The place seems deserted, Jim. Maybe the league agents were chipped in. Yeah, this junk yard is just a front There wouldn't be much regular activity going on. Yeah, you see that low building at the other end of the yard? Yes, sir. That's the office. Somebody will be in there. We've got to take them by surprise. Oh, with all these piles of scrap metal to hide behind, that ought to be easy. There's a 
power in the middle of the night. I told her that I couldn't have ever seen it. I never looked at her with her tears since she never ran. I looked into the mirror. I touched her. I wonder if those Jupiter patrol units have found any trace of Jekyll's yet. I don't think they will. The cargo ship he and Thorne were on was loaded with weapons and explosives. I mean, Jekyll didn't have a chance. Save your sympathy, huh? What do you mean, sir? Thorne said Jekyll's got him into a space suit. He had that suit checked for fingerprints, particularly on the helmet and face plate. Oh, uh-huh. He found yours, naturally, because you helped Thorne out of his suit. On that face plate, he found other marks, made by human fingers. But there were no prints, no recognizable patterns, just a smell. Uh-oh. And Jekyll's must be from Dalgeeta. Uh-oh. What's that? The train. Someone started the electromagnetic train. Hey, Commander, look. It's swinging right over our head. The, the magnet with the scrap metal hanging from it. Somebody is in that tower, huh? Hey, we'd better get out of here quick. Stop right where you are. Stop or I'll drop this metal on you. Where's that voice coming from? I am up in the train tower. And I can see every move you make. A directional microphone is picking up your voice. Where is the town of Dargida? We don't know. That's the truth. Listen, Commander. Ten tons of scrap metal are suspended right over your head. If I cut off the current in the magnet, the metal will fall and crush you. Now, once more, where is the town of Dargida? We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. I got a secret. I got a secret. Well, hi, Issa. Gee, I like secrets. You want to tell me yours? I'll give you a hint. It's about Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa. About Nestle's Cocoa, huh? Well, let me see. Uh, could it be a secret about why it's so delicious? You know, Nestle's Cocoa has an exclusive, rich, fruit chocolate flavor. You just that, not you, Phil? Everybody knows that. Oh, sure. Well, let me see now. Is is it about the magic speed of Nestle? You just put one, two, three spoonfuls in your cup and add hot water. You see, Nestle's is the only instant cocoa that's complete with whole milk and sugar. Gee, that's no secret. Around our house, I make Nestle's cocoa by myself every morning. It's a whiz to fix. Guess again. Well, if it isn't about Nestle's delicious flavor or its incredible speed, then it must have something to do with its goodness. Because Nestle's cocoa is complete with rich, whole milk and sugar, so it has plenty of power built right in. It's just the thing every boy and girl needs to start the day. Is that your secret? Gosh, Captain Two Phils, you'll never guess it. I suppose I'll have to tell you after all. Well, Issa, don't you keep that a secret. If you're giving a party with Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa, let's invite the whole Space Patrol gang, because everybody loves Nestle. And it's no secret that you can get Nestle's Cocoa in the big red can at your grocery. Come on, let's go. We're having Nestle. We're having Nestle. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Conquest of Dargida. Commander Corey has learned that agents from the League of the Green Serpent are using a scrap metal yard in Saturn City as a base of operations. Buzz and Happy plan to approach the office shack at the end of the yard by walking between stacks of pest scrap metal. Suddenly, machinery grinds into action, and a huge crane swings a giant electromagnet over their heads. Clinging to the magnet is a mass of scrap iron. An amplified voice from the crane control tower roars an insistent demand. Where is the crown of Gargita? I told you, we don't know. Commander, the space of phone message is coming through. If you aren't ready to talk by the time I finish with the call, I will bury you under the metal. Can you speak with the wind for while he's busy with the space of phone? Yes, I can. I'm still with the same stuff. Over the past. Where is the crown? Where it belongs. 
and our Jiva. That message was from our leader's headquarters. The League of the Green Serpents now rules our Jiva. You are free to go. Hear that, sir? Come on, let's get Wait. out of here. One moment. We're waiting. I was ordered to spare your lives on one condition. What is it? That you give me and the other agents a chance to leave your solar system without interference. How can I be sure they're all gone? We came here only to get the crown. The new emperor, Holmir, wants no trouble with your powerful United Senate. What is your answer? Tell your emperor his agents have 24 hours to clear out. Thank you. That is ample time. For myself, I ask you to stay where you are for 15 minutes to permit me to get away from the yard. Do you agree? Yes. As a gesture of good faith, I'll move the magnet that has been hanging over your head. I'm glad we weren't under that. There's something strange about this thing. Well, we'll wait 15 minutes and get to the spaceport. Half an hour later, Buzz and Happy board the Terra 5 at the Saturn City spaceport. I don't get it, Commander. There's only one way that Darjita agents could have found that crown, and that's to find the man who hit it. And we don't even know who he is. Happy we're going to find out about that crown. After we blast off, I'll contact the secret documents section and have them check that code of envelope. You see if the crown is still hidden? Right. Ready for blast off hat. Close port. Fire jets. Up, chipping away. Around Shardu's headquarters in the capital city of Darjeeda, guards stand alert, armed with weapons never before seen on that planet. Shardu gazes out the window of his office, smiling smugly at the scene below. As the door opens, he turns. You rang for me, Shardu? Yes, Burbain. I am sending you on a special mission to the United Planet. You will blast off immediately. But Shardu, with the situation so critical here on Darjeeda, difficult. The situation is perfect. Didn't you hear the latest news report? Yes, that's what I mean. Your charge that Talmir is wearing a fake crown is certain to stir up trouble. For Talmir, but not for us. And will the people believe the truth? Won't they accept the new crown and Talmir as emperor? Come here. Look down there in the street. Well, it's a mob of people, but they've been parading around ever since Talmir's agents arrived with the crown. I am going to open the window. Listen to that. Does that sound like the tears of loyal subjects? It's frightening. Frightening only to the fall. Emperor? But suppose they get out of hand. I'll take care of them. We blast off for the United Planet and keep an eye on Commander Corey. Why bother with Corey now? The latest news from the United Planet is that the League agents have been recalled to Dajida. The Space Patrol has agreed to a 24-hour truce. Does the truce include your agent, Shardy? No, not ours. But Corey is probably puzzled about the report that the crown is back on Dajida. Perhaps, Corbain, he will lead us to the real thing. Now go. Contacting the secret document section at Terra headquarters, Commander Corey cuts in a scrambler circuit on his ship's space phone, thus foiling any attempt to intercept the message. A clerk removes the carefully coded document from the files and relays certain information to Buzz. Right now, several hours later, Buzz and Happy are in the home of Roger Kirkland in Venus City, searching the wall of the spacious library for a secret panel. Kirkland said it was midway between two large pictures. Huh? Oh, it was sure nice of him to let us come and snoop around in his home all by ourselves. Busy at his office. Besides, I have a feeling he'd rather not know any more about the plan than he does. That's it, sir. Oh, you'd never know there was a panel now. Keep your fingers crossed. Open up. 
There it is. Commander, what about that report from Darjita, then? If they've got a crown there, it must be a fake. Yes, sir. Then what are they going to do with this one? Keep it? No. Then to send it back to Darjita, they belong. Send it back? How? Palmer, the head of the League of the Green Serpent, is now emperor. We have one of his agents, Plato, in custody on terror. To release him and send him back to the town. Stand where you are and get your hands up. Thanks, sir. Poor thing. One of Chardou's agents. Just stand there with your hands raised, both of you. In a few seconds, I'll have you under control with my sight force. Then I can put this gun away. You can put it away now. Take the crown. You're going to return it anyway. Yes, but not to the right person. Palmer is emperor, isn't he? Ha. Only for a few hours. And only by the clever intrigue of Chardou. And now, Talmir has probably been assassinated by his outraged subjects. Come. You are returning with me to Darjita and Chardou. You've got the crown. What does Chardou want with us? Revenge. Come, gentlemen, we mustn't keep the Emperor waiting. Under the influence of the psych force, the powerful brain energy produced by Borbane's mind, Buzz and Happy accompany the Darjita agents of the Terra 5. Spaceborne from Venus, the ship goes into star drive for Darjita. Right now, with Borbane still guarding him, Buzz and Happy stand before Shardu in his headquarters on Darjita. I am well pleased, Borbane. Thank you, Shardu. Here is your crown. Place it on the table so I can admire it. Yes, sir. Now, about our prisoners. You have caused me considerable trouble, Commander Corey. You'll have more trouble if you don't let us return to town. My agents have already faked one possible disaster in your solar system. The other's occurrence will be explained by another. By fake disaster, do you mean jackers and a cargo of weapons and explosives? Yes, Cadet. Those weapons are now being carried by my guards, and they may be used on Palmer and his following. And what do you intend to do with us? My first official act as Emperor of Darjita will be to execute you. Execute us? Why? Because you are thieves and spies. Were you not caught with the crown of Darjita in your possession? Oh, well, yeah, but we were going to return it. But to the imposter, Talmir. How do we know which of you is the rightful emperor? Obviously, I am. For well, I have the real crown of Darjita. That is the age-old traditional test. Well, isn't it also supposed to be a tradition that the crown brings wisdom and justice? A fat lot of wisdom and justice will get from you. My people will learn that what benefits me will benefit Daisida. I assure you, when I wear the crown, there will be no complaint from the people. You're going to rule by fear, is that it? It is the only way. The people have been taught that the crown confers wisdom and justice on its wearer. As long as they believe that silly superstition, they will automatically think that I am... Wise and just. Corvain. Yes, Shardu. Take the prisoners away and lock them up. I will prepare for their execution. An hour later, Buzz and Happy are led from a cell into a large room. They are placed against a wall facing a throne resting on a raised platform. Armed guards stand silent at each doorway. Moments pass in utter silence. The space patroller stands staring at the empty throne. Well, not that I'm in any rush, but I'm told not to perform. Stardew is waiting to make a dramatic entrance, I suppose. Now is the time to make a break for There's a guard at every door. They drop us before we need to rest. Uh-oh. Here he comes. Walking toward the throne. Before a vein carrying the throne. Look at the crown. Oh, well, it's more beautiful than if you want to be It seems to be glowing. Highness Shardu, Emperor of Darji. We are here to execute these two criminals from another world. First, my Prime Minister, Bourdain, will place the crown of Darjita upon my head. Hail, Shardu, Emperor of Darji. It is fitting that my first official act under the crown of Darjita is to order the execution of the two thieves he tried to keep the crown from its rightful wearer. Let this be a lesson to all who defy Shardu. Guards, ready your weapons. The first, the second one. The third, 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 
right now. Guys, right, lower your weapons. Commander Corey, is that happy? Would you step forward, please? Oh, let's come over here. Execution. There will be no execution. I am setting these men free. Commander, did you hear that? Sure do. I mean, your highness, your, your first act is in Silence, Bourdain. My first act will be one of justice and of gratitude. It is clear to any fair-minded man that Commander Cordy and Cadet Happy have tried to preserve peace in their solar system and in ours. That's true. They risked their lives to save us from our own folly. Bourdain. You will see that they are returned safely to their ship. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. I don't know what came over you all of a sudden, but thanks. I will also return the stolen cargo ship and the weapons. I am sure they will not be needed on Gargita. If I can do anything else to make amends for the trouble I've caused, please tell me. No, Charlie. We've got our ships and our freedom. And you've got to tell me. Oh, uh, about the time. The minute you put it on, Charlie, you changed. Say, Commander, could that legend be true, or is it just radiations from Dargita's sun acting on the jewels and, and influencing Chardu's mind? I don't know, huh? Whatever the explanation is, the crown seems to be right there for long. Yes, sir. And you know something, Chardu? On you, it looks good. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Right, you are happy. Nestle's new coconut bar is the newest idea in chocolate enjoyment. It's rich, it's sweet, it's creamy milk chocolate. Just loaded with fresh toasted coconut. It's so crisp when you bite into it. And it gets crisper with every bite. Smoking rockets, eating a Nestle's coconut bar is so much fun. Now, I just happen to have one right here in my... Uh, 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 well, maybe it's in this pocket. I'm sure I had one somewhere. I'm happy you know that's just an excuse to get me to give you a big, fresh coconut. Oh, gee, Commander, you can see right through me, can't you? When it comes to your eating habits, I certainly can. You just can't resist any of Nestle's sensational chocolate bars, and especially the delicious coconut bars. Well, then we will come out. So here, let's see. Oh, man. Me for Nestle's coconut bar. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. A criminal scientist has discovered a method of traveling back through time. He has taken Buzz and Happy back 14 centuries and has left them on a desolate seacoast on the planet Earth. I just can't realize that we're back in the year 1591. Well, let's make the best of it. After all, our ancestors did. Then we're stuck here in the past forever? Well, perhaps there's one slight chance of getting back. Yeah? Well, what is it, Jim? Hey, hey that feels strange. Everything's going black. What's that sound? I don't know. I feel like I'm floating. Commander! Commander, what's happening to us? Commander! Where are you? Be with us again next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Time Pirates! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Bela Kovac, Dick Tufel speaking. This week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's chocolate bars. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.